Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is to wherever you're at. 91 Cav GT coming at you again with another build video. Uh, sorry about the wind. Once again, this is South Texas. The sun is shining bright. It's a beautiful day, but it's windy. Sorry, can't control nature. Um, Want to come to you guys today to give y'all a cargo trailer build update. Uh, got some more work done on the ceiling. Uh, I'm actually pretty close to being done on the ceiling. Um, getting some electrical components laid out as far as where they're going to go, uh, how they're going to be all hooked up. And I also want to give you guys a little bit of a warning in regards to electrical components that you buy and the wiring that it comes with. So, with that being said, let's get started. So, here we go. Definitely making some progress. Uh, as I've stated before, I am not a carpenter at all. Uh, I don't do the best work. I don't have a table saw. I cut all of this with a hand saw, actually, trying to be as quiet as I can for the neighbors. Uh, but regardless, uh, it's not turning out too terribly bad. I'm not the best in the world, I admit, but for what it is, it's not going to be too bad. So, we got a lot more of those done. I am actually completely out of the cedar planks. So I'm gonna have to go and buy some more because we only got about two more runs of cedar planks to go over here and the entire roof is going to be done. Uh, this cedar plank here that's gonna cover this transition strip, that's gonna be pretty easy because there's not gonna be anything that's been cut out on it. Unlike this side where the speakers are going to be at, which I haven't done any kind of work on that just yet, but it's all drawn out and it's ready to be worked on. Uh, I did move some stuff around inside here. Uh, the battery was sitting down here and the battery is now actually where it's going to go. It's not secured yet, but it is sitting over there in the corner um, right next to the door and that is going to be where it will be mounted eventually. Uh, that is just slightly in front of the axle. Uh, so it's extremely heavy it's probably 70 80 pounds so it'll be kind of centered just in front of the axle just a bit the water container is going to be on the opposite side over here once again kind of centered over the axle maybe just a touch forward of the axle uh, to give the good amount of tongue weight without being too overly heavy in the rear so <clears throat> with that being said I do have the charge controller kind of temporarily mounted right there. I'll come over to the other side and show you in just a minute. So it is still hooked up. The battery is hooked up and it's hooked up to temporarily hooked up to a power inverter that I just got that I'm testing for our RV. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and show you guys before I go over to the side door. One of the things I was talking about. Now, one of the things I'm going to be installing here, let me show you guys, is a switch panel. It's a little dirty, but okay. A little switch panel. Uh, it's got a 12 volt power outlet and a USB outlet. Volt gauge and then five switches. Now this came pre-wired. Now it came pre-wired with this positive wire jumpered between everything. This negative wire jumpered between everything. And then several of these actually to fuse all of the devices that you hook up. So a few problems with how they had this pre-wired. First thing, is I hooked up my multimeter after I took all of this apart and I tested between the first connection, which is right here, and the last connection, which is right here. And I got three tenths of an ohm resistance. That's not good. That's not good at all. That's a lot of resistance in your circuits. And that's prior to hooking anything up to it. So just connecting power to here, you would see 
a decent voltage loss coming out of your last connection here. That's not good. I mean, would it work? Yes. The only downfall is these are going to get warm. And not only that, if you have, let's say, let's say five amps on each one of these switches, and then 10 amps on the cigarette lighter outlet, and then say one of these hooked up, so say one amp. So that's five, that's 11 amps, plus five on each one of these. So 11, 16, 21, 26, 31, 36 amps. 36 amps going through this probably 16 gauge wire. That's going to get hot. That's not acceptable. That's not acceptable at all. And that could actually produce a fire. And the big problem too, the way this was pre-wired, is all of your fuses were on the output of the switches. You should have the fuses on the input side of the switches before it even goes out to the device. Each one of these really needs to be fused separately, and that's what I'm going to be doing. But not daisy-chained like this to give power to everything. This is a fire hazard. Don't do that. Do not, do not, do not do that. This is not good. These fuse holders are great. I love these fuse holders. Just comes with a basic automotive blade style fuse. And these came with a 15 amp fuse from the factory. I love these fuse holders. There's nothing wrong with this. What's wrong is how they had this wired up. That's what's wrong. This is not a good way of doing it, okay? Now let me put this up back over here where it was and let me go around to the other side and let me show you what a good way of doing it is <clears throat> so let's go to the side door come inside here this is what I'm going to be using this is a fuse block and a ground distribution block as well now this there's going to be one fuse per switch. The USB outlets, the cigarette lighter outlet, the volt display, all of those are more than likely going to be on a different fuse. Is it overkill? Probably. Will I have to worry about it catching fire? No. No, I won't. Because each one of these individually will be fused. This block is rated at 100 amps. I would never put 100 amps through this. Realistically, maximum amperage I would probably put through it is probably in the 40 amp range, 30 to 40 amp range. <clears throat> okay. Now on that same token, this is a 2000 watt pure sine wave power inverter. Okay, I picked this up for our RV, and I brought it out here just for testing, for testing purposes. Now these wires here, this power and ground, now don't freak out because there's not a fuse on this power, because inside here, it is internally fused. I've got a 150 amp fuse on here. So I don't dare hook this up to something huge because it would pop this 150 amp fuse. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So, realistically, if you're pushing this power inverter, it can easily pull 200 amps. Easily pull 200 amps. This might, might be 4 gauge. Um, if I venture to guess, I would actually guess that's closer to 6 gauge. Okay. That is also pushing it. I would not use these wires to run this power inverter with the maximum amount that it's capable of. I wouldn't. I'm going to be hooking up this power inverter with one op power wire. One op is a lot bigger than 
the small wire here a lot bigger and one alt will be more than adequate to be able to handle 200 to 300 amps that this power inverter whew, sorry about that wind is getting gusty here um <clears throat> one alt is more than capable of supplying enough power for this power inverter so once again it's not just the switch panel and the wiring that it came with that's bad this wiring here that the power inverter came with is also not acceptable in my opinion. So you really have to be careful with the electronics that you buy with the wiring that it comes with and do your research and look up and see what is acceptable and what's not. So with that being said, let me get back in here. <clears throat> so this I am laying out where some of the components are going to be going. Now that is an AM FM radio that also has a backup camera. Uh, so I want to put a momentary switch somewhere close to the radio hooked up to the backup camera. So I don't know where I'm going to hook up the backup camera just yet. It might out be outside the side door. It might be out the back. I, I'm not exactly sure just yet. So that way if you are in here and you get a little knock at the door in the middle of the night, you can push that little button and before you open up that door you can see what's outside so anyway uh, switch panel now this board here is going to be right beside the door actually right back behind me so this panel oh how can I explain this <clears throat> some of these devices this is a 30 amp uh, charger for the battery but the only time this is going to be running is when you're at shore power uh, this is the display for the shunt fuse panel radio switch panel and the solar charge controller which temporarily is mounted right here is going to go right here okay <clears throat> now the radio switch panel shunt and the charge controller you will be able to see from inside the trailer but all of these are going to be surface mounted with a more decorative board on the front so you will only see the front of the radio you will not see any of these wires at all you only see the front of the radio the front of the switch panel the front of the shunt i.e you know so on and so on the fuse panel and the battery charger is going to be back behind all of this but I do want a door that will be able to open one way or another in order to allow access to the fuse panel should a fuse pop now I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that just yet but that's what the plan is so this board <coughs> and the corresponding devices mounted to it are gonna be mounted right here so you see I've got the 1x3, 1x2, I'm sorry, screwed in there, and another 1x2 screwed in there. And I now have some of the insulation actually up in here. It's a little bit easier to see the insulation over here because I don't have this 1x2 in yet. So this is... A uh, half inch thick foam board, <clears throat> RMAX, RMAX.com is the manufacturer. That's what I'm going to be using throughout the rest of the cargo trailer here. These strips here, that's what I'm going to be mounting all the wall to, and that's also where I'm going to be mounting. This area here is going to be sticking out a little bit further away from the wall. So that way there's enough depth in here to mount the char battery charger down low, uh, enough depth so that you only see the front of the charge controller. You don't see any of the sides or the top or anything like that. Now there are cooling fins. There you go. You can see the cooling fins here. So what my plan is, <clears throat> 
there's going to be a little bit of a gap down here at the bottom on the sides somewhere I'm not sure exactly where just yet but there's gonna be a little bit of a gap and up here towards the top I've got a couple of small fans that I'm gonna be putting up here so that way if anything is turned on it will be drawing air up and out so there will probably be just a little gap up here that you really don't see a whole lot but that way the air will come up and out to ensure all of the electrical components are nice and cool so that's what the plan is <clears throat> but first I gotta finish this roof gotta finish mounting the cedar boards up here um, I'd like to go ahead and get this one done as well come over here get the speakers put in finish this little bit right here as well and then I want to put these strips in on the walls get this insulation in and get all of this stuff working here this is just a temporary workbench that I got set up so I can cut boards on stuff like that um, there's the battery <clears throat> and I've got a couple of power outlets hooked up right now so I can connect fans and lights to and all of that and once again they are fused very close to the battery uh, the only thing that's not fused right now is the charge controller so I, that will eventually have a fuse on it as well I don't like having that unfused I also had to reprogram the charge controller I originally had it programmed to charge the battery up to 14.9 volts but I was seeing that the battery was only getting up to 14.6 volts <coughs> and then I started hearing a clicking noise and I couldn't figure out where this clicking noise was coming from so I started looking closer and come to find out the BMS that is mounted inside here on the battery it was hitting the high voltage cutout at 14.6 volts so I had to lower the voltage down on this which you can see battery voltage right now is 14.4 volts putting six amps in right now um, I had to lower the charging voltage the maximum voltage on the charge controller so right now it's set to 14.5 volts so it's almost fully charged right now so that way we don't hit the high voltage cutout on the BMS I really wanted to run 14.9 volts to get a little bit of capa more capacity on the batteries, but I don't have a choice on that. Uh, this BMS I've had for about a year and a half, and I don't remember the specifications on it. So apparently high voltage cutout is 14.6 volts. So anyway, uh, making some progress, getting there, uh, like I say, I'm not a carpenter <laughs> I'm not I'm just doing this in my spare time um, giving me something to do and getting this ready to go camping to take with us so we can get to more campsites than what you can pulling a 40 foot fifth wheel so there's a lot of campsites that you really can't get to pulling a 40 foot fifth wheel not to mention that Pulling this little trailer, we can pull it with my wife's Volkswagen Atlas. Pulling the fifth wheel, eh, it's going to cost a lot more in gas. So, I think <clears throat> for some of our trips, this little cargo trailer is going to be perfect for it. And because it's going to be fully self-contained as far as having water and electricity, we will be able to go to primitive campsites and camp and still have the luxuries with us and that will open up more campsites for us to be able to go to and still have the creature comforts of home so anyway making some progress getting there so that's gonna wrap it up for this video y'all have a good one god bless you we'll see you next time